Are we safe to fly? Many of us are going on trips. We're all going to the Super Bowl. Is that safe? Yeah, yes, of course. And I, I think I'm glad you asked me that question. Right now, the risk to Americans is really low. And it could really explode into something much bigger. I hope it doesn't. We're preparing ourselves for that. But right now, you're right. The risk of getting into a real problem with influenza is much greater than the risk of this new virus in the United States. There have been estimates of hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. who could die or in the worst case scenario, millions. Can you tell the American people that that is possible? You know, it's possible because when you do a model, you have a worst case scenario, the best case scenario. And the reality is how you react to that will depend where you're going to be on that curb. So, Dr. Fauci, it's Saturday morning in America. People are waking up right now with real concerns about this. They want to go to malls and movies, maybe the gym as well. Should we be changing our habits? And if so, how? No, right now, at this moment, there is no need to change anything that you're doing on a day-by-day -day basis. Right now, the risk is still low, but this could change. We have to make sure we don't forget that the most important thing is to keep this six-foot physical distance from individuals. Dr. Fauci, if the, if the most vulnerable, gr vulnerable group is the elderly right now, we're seeing all of these school closures around the country. Is that the right move for children and families? Well, I think it should be done in a proportionate way. And I, mean, I think what's going on right now is, is in generally an appropriate approach. As a fundamental principle, I do agree that we should try as best as we possibly can to get the children back to school because of the well-documented, you know, secondary downstream uh, ripple effects that are negative, uh, particularly on parents and on the children when you keep them out of schools. Well, you know, Martha, that's a good question. We get asked it all the time. You know, we say it not being facetiously as a soundbite or anything, but, you know, close the bars and keep the schools open is what we really say. Obviously, you don't have one size fits all, but as I said in the past, and as you accurately quoted me, the default position should be to try as best as possible within reason to keep the children in school or to get them back to school. The Swedes came out with a paper and also a paper from NIH grantees from La Jolla just came out in the journal Cell showing the same thing, that in individuals who were infected and recovered, they had T cell responses, but importantly, there was T cell reactively also detected in non-exposed individuals, which means that maybe there's some memory from other coronaviruses that are benign cold viruses that you were exposed to that might, and I say might, explain why some people, even children, might be protected that they had exposure that's not measured in antibody, but measured by T cells. There's also the pre-existing immunity of those who have cross-reactivity, which is about a third of the public in many we'll estimates from studies, which would actually get you we to about three senators. I'd like to talk to you about that also, because there was a study that recently came out that pre-existing immunity to coronaviruses that are common cold do not cross-react with the COVID-19. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. The better part of valor is that when you're out, and you can't maintain that six foot distance to wear some sort of facial covering. A lot of folks uh, are hearing now about double masking, wearing two masks or trying to get one of those N95 medical grade masks. Do you believe that that's advisable and makes a difference? You know, it, it, it likely does because I mean, this is a physical covering to prevent uh, uh, droplets and virus to get in. So if you have a physical covering with one layer, you put another layer on, it just makes common sense. If you really want to have an extra little uh, bit of protection, maybe I should put two masks on. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's no data that indicates that that is going to make a difference. If a physical barrier with one mask works, it makes common sense that two layers or three layers, and you should have a double layer mask and one mask anyway, but if you want to put an extra mask on, there's nothing wrong with that.
tongue for 